Hi guys, this is just going to be a very quick video to show you how to steam up your Mamod Quarry locomotive. This is the exact same for the Mamod Sterling as they are identical underneath and this is pretty much the same for almost all live steam locomotives. I will be doing this, some things are a little bit hard to film like trying to lubricate everything underneath so I'm just going to try and point and show you and tell you and then the things that I can show you that I can leave the camera on the side and film then I will. So uh, bear with me, sit back and I hope you enjoy. Okay guys, so what we've got to do now is fill it with gas. You should always fill it with gas first, so while you're going around lubricating and filling up the water, it just gives um, the gas time to settle in the uh, gas tank and uh, gives it time to warm the tank up as well, because obviously uh, once you've put it in, if you touch the uh, tip of the nozzle, it's ice cold. The gas I will be using is a mix of butane and propane at about 60-40% um, and Mamod do supply the adapter or if you haven't got one you can buy them online and the gas canister needs to be a EN417 compliant so then you can screw that on and then use the bottle. So first thing you need to do is make sure that your tap is switched off which it is so you get your, ca your gas canister, I hope you can see this and then all you do is press down and hold hold for about 20-25 seconds and then you'll know when it's full because it'll spit back but that is completely normal and that's how you know it's full so if you just wait now and hopefully we will see it and that's it done okay so next just here this long tube here is the lubricator you've got a cap on the top and hopefully you can see just behind the step on the bottom you fill this up with um, steam cylinder oil and it works its way down the steam pipe and lubricates the cylinders while the, the loco is running um, you take the top off to fill it and you take the bottom to drain it so you should always unscrew the bottom one and drain out any water. You'll know when the water's all out because the water just comes gushing out. I will try and film it and show you. Um, and then the oil slowly starts to droop out after. Then you, before the oil starts coming out, quickly put the cap back on, tighten it up, and then you can fill it up, and then your lubricator is all full and ready for action. So I will uh, try and show you now. Right, so always remove the top one first just put that to one side now make sure you don't get them confused because the top one is actually a shorter thread than the bottom one this can be really awkward to film now bear my fingers so I'm holding the camera because I haven't got a tripod oh don't know if you just saw that I've probably moved the camera there's the water that's just run out as you can see there's the water on the bottom and the oil is dripping out now, so try and screw it back on. I probably should have done that a little bit quicker. Sorry that you can't see much. And that was didn't go as well as I'd hoped. <laughs> so that's screwed on. Only screw it hand tight because you've got the O-rings. They will do the. Uh, they will stop it from leaking. But only do them hand tight or you will destroy the O-rings. So as you can see from underneath now, there's a bit of little bit of oil because I was a bit slow because I was talking and the water came gushing out straight away. So now we can go back up to the top of the lubricator and then we can uh, fill it up. Don't fill it all the way, but make sure you've got enough in there to uh, last the duration of your run. Okay, so Mamod very kindly include this. I don't know if, oh there we go, Mamod 50ml steam cylinder oil, compound 460. This is what you have to use in your lubricator. Don't use lubricating oil. This is a uh, much, because this, this oil has to uh, take the heat from the cylinders obviously, so it has to be a much much better grade of oil. So all you do is pop it in, give it a squeeze, I don't know if you'll see it on the camera but I can see in the lubricator. Like I said before, don't fill it all the way. Just make sure you've put enough in there. As you can see, I'm still going. And then that will do. So screw the cap on. Nice and 
not too tight, but uh, don't break the o-ring, whatever you do. And then uh, that's your uh, lubricator filled up. Right, I've turned the locomotive on its side because I want to show you where you need to lubricate underneath. Now for this you use a different oil, you use lubrication oil. And this is the one that my mod provide. If that will focus. There you go, lubrication oil. Slightly thinner, so it uh, lubricates and obviously doesn't need to uh, withstand any mass fast amount of heat. Now, because I've got no tripod, I can't really show you me pouring the oil on, but I will show you and point where you need to oil. So if we look at the uh, com rods on the top, you need to lubricate here and here. And this is your axle. You need to lubricate both sides. Hopefully this is focusing. There and in there. You don't need to lubricate the wheels. This here is your slipper centric movement, which uh, controls the flow, the opening and close, the um, for your momentum motion. If I can get my words out, this needs to be lubricated because obviously this moves. Ev basically, everything that moves needs to be lubricated. You need to lubricate there and not here. Here, but obviously, because this moves and the inside of this crank. Obviously it all moves, it needs to be lubricated. This is your cylinder. Inside the cylinder you don't need to worry about lubricating because that's what your um, lubricator is for. It lubricates inside while, it, while it's running. You need to lubricate the shaft for the piston and this is for the valves. Opening as it slides it opens and shuts the valve. So that also needs lubricating as well. Um, I don't know if we can see it but this valve here Bear with my, bear with my uh, poor camera. As that slides forward, it comes out the front there. If I try and turn the wheel, you might see it as it comes out there. So I just put a blob of oil on that as well. So as you can see, oil there and there. Best thing is as well, what I do is make sure that when you uh, do lubricate, it's all the way out. So then you can put more oil on, because if you lubricate it like that, you're only going to lubricate at the very end, which obviously won't do nothing. Um, and while we're doing that, you can see the slipper centric working. So obviously that needs to be lubricated. Uh, and it's the exact same for the other side, the bottom. Obviously you'd probably do this while the locomotive is upside down, but for ease of filming, I've just laid it on the side. So I hope that's a quick and helpful guide to... Uh, show you where you need to lubricate. So I'm going to go and do that and then put the locomotive on some blocks and then uh, I'll show you what's next. Right, so we've got gas in there, we've got the lubricating oil in there and we've drained out the water. We've lubricated everything underneath so next is to take off the safety valve and we need to fill up in there with water so you can use a pipette or you can use a ketchup bottle and squirt in water as long as you've cleaned the bottle out um, and then what you need to do once you've filled up the boiler and it's overflowing you need to mamod recommend you take out 40 millilitres of water just so you leave enough room in the top of the boiler for the steam because obviously if you fill it up completely with water there's nowhere for the steam so uh, i will uh, go and do this now right so as you can see the water is right at the top of the boiler now, so I've filled it completely full. And all this uh, puddle of water here on the right hand side, because that was me being a bit careless and I spilt some. Uh, it's always best to use um, distilled water, rain water, filtered, or um, if you've got any like, um, uh, if you're lucky and you have one of them filter jugs, don't ever use tap water, especially if you've got really hard water, because you'll fill the boiler full of lime scale and you'll give yourself a world of problems the more you use your locomotive. So what you have to do is, while the boiler is full, I've just got this little pipette that Mamod supply, and then this is going to be hard to try and pull it up and film. So oh, I've got halfway. Bear with me one second. Sorry about that. So I've just pulled out 10ml of water now 
So I've got to do that four times as I've got to pull out 40 mil. Uh, I'm just using this pipette because this is what Mamod supplied, but I would highly recommend you get a little plastic tube to put on the end of there just so you can stick it in there and pull it out because it will be so much more easier. So uh, once you've took out 40 mil, get your safety valve, screw it back on, not too tight again, and then you've got your gas, you've got your oil, you've got your water, so it's time to light. Right, so everything's done now, so all that's left is to fire her. So on the Mamod, these are just for decoration. Sorry, my finger's in the way. But if you bought an Aki Craft, you can actually use them to open the smoke box door, which I think is really cool. Anyway, we'll stick with what we've got. So we have to set the smoke box door off, so this one just turns all the way up to the top. Sorry, my, my finger's in the way again. So it's all the way at the top, and then it just should pull off. <laughs> Mine's been a little bit stiff, but you just got to be careful that when you pull it out, it doesn't go flying on the floor. Because I've seen this happen a few times. There we go. And that's out. So the smoke box door is out. So all you need to do is turn your gas burner up. And as you can hear, there's the gas. You get a lighter. I recommend quite a long one. So I've got this kitchen one. You just give it a there you go, that's lit. You can definitely hear that's lit. So quickly put your smoke box door, smoke box door on the front, like so, twist it round to lock it, and then you're creating steam. So what's happening now is the gas burner is lighting up the water in your boiler, warming up, heating up your water in your boiler, which will eventually start turning into steam. So I'm going to turn my smoke box door the right way, but I won't do that on film because my hands are just getting in the way. So uh, I'll show you uh, as the pressure starts to okay, rise. So we're back at the cab end now. You can, you should be able to hear the gas burner whirring away as it's starting to uh, warm up the water in the boiler. What you can do is slightly just turn up your gas burner ever so slightly just while it's warming up and then as your pressure starts to rise then uh, slowly start winding that back off but don't close it all together obviously here is the regulator so as we start getting um, the steam to the pressure that we want uh, we just crack open the regulator and we'll start running uh, if we come round this side there's our pressure gauge I don't know how well you can read that there you go so it's on zero at the moment it takes five to seven minutes for the um, loco to start building enough pressure. Um, this can, the safety valve will blow off at 50 psi on this, um, but these run really smoothly and well at about 20 psi. So I'm going to let it build to about 30 to 40 psi and then slowly start to get it uh, going. Now because this has the um, slipper centric valve gear instead of the, the uh, more complex valve gear, but I can never say the name so I'm not even going to try. Um, so you actually have to manually turn the wheels in the direction that you want to set the valve gear. So if I lower the camera enough, I can't actually see the screen on the camera now so I don't know how well this is going to go. So you need to decide whether you're going to run your locomotive forward or backwards. If it's on a track it's so much easier because you just push it, but because I'm running it on blocks because this is still a new locomotive and it's being bedded in. I've got to turn the wheels by hand, so I'm just going to uh, start turning the wheels like that. This is hard to do while holding the camera. There you go, so as you can see I've just started turning it. So I have picked my direction. So my locomotive is actually going to run forward today. While on the blocks it's not going to move anywhere because obviously uh, it's jacked up. And then uh, hopefully I'll be able to start running it on the track. So. Um, I'll get back to you as we've built up pressure and uh, I'll show you it going. And here she is in steam. And here she is running super slow and as you can see, super smooth.
obviously if you want to adjust how fast and slow she goes just tap the regulator here there you go so speed her up even more slowing her back down and don't forget as well you can always adjust the gas on that end knob there but you should turn that down once you've uh, got it to the desired pressure of about 20 psi anyway okay so that's it for this uh, how to fire a mamod quarry locomotive uh, any questions or any comments drop me a line in the comments below I hope you've enjoyed if there's anything you'd like me to cover or even to run that will be coming up soon um, just hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any upcoming content of this loco and other live steam locomotives will be coming soon so stay safe and thanks for watching